Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at how to make a bar chart in Excel. This is going to be the last basic chart that we learn how to use in Excel. The point is not to run through every single feature that we can have in Excel, but to just give you an exposure of how this works in general so that you can explore on your own. After this, we're going to move on to a different program called Views, but that will be in the coming weeks. For today, we'll just have another look at Excel and the basic elements that we have access to in Excel when making a bar chart. So let's jump into the data. I think this is the last time that we'll see this US Census data. We'll have a discussion sometime about how to find other data and we'll use other data as we introduce more and more different types of plots. But this is good for a bar chart as well. And in fact, we kind of already saw the bar chart that we're going to make when we had tried to make the stacked bar chart because that's what Excel defaulted to. I think so far we've plotted fraction in a pie chart and percentage in a stacked bar chart. So let's do people. And let's go ahead and just select all of this. And you'll see that when we have numerical data selected, as well as these categorical data selected, when we go to insert a bar chart, Excel's smart enough to know what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and say bar chart. Let's just do a regular old horizontal bar chart. And it knows that this is the label that goes with this number. Let's make it big again so that we can see it. This is what a standard Excel chart looks like. I think that it is fine, but it isn't great, in fact. That's my opinion. And there's a lot of different design choices that we can make that we will cover in a different video. I think one of the first things is this idea of the title. We can change that real quick. That's just by changing the name people, which is here, from it being people to being degrees post high school. So Excel just chose wrong what we wanted. That's fine, we know how to fix it. I'll say that and okay. And now it says degrees post high school. We have numbers along here. I think that's totally fine. We have category labels here, which I think is totally fine. I like that the category labels are horizontal and they read next to the bar. I think that's pretty good. Something that I don't really like is that the bars are so skinny and there's so much white space between them and that's something we do have control over. So if we go ahead and just select in here and double click on the bars, we will bring up these format data series again. And we have something called gap width. And so you can see that if I slide this over and let go, the gap width has increased, meaning the bars are narrower. And then I can slide this way and now they're fatter. I think a gap width that's like 50% is okay. We could look at 33%. To me, that maybe is pretty nice. I think 66% is another one that can work. You can sort of decide what you think looks good for the particular plot that you have. We also have control over things like series overlap, but we only have one series, so we don't have multiple bars. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that right now. We have control over the fill color, of course. So this color could be something else like this red, if we like. I think that's a pretty nice red. We can give them a solid line if we want, and that solid line could be black. And then we could make that solid line much more thick if we want. That's like comically thick. Instead, I think something like two point might look nice if you like having a line around your bars. You don't always need to. Something else that we might be able to do or think about is the fact that several different ways we could order this. Right now it's ordered from none, associate, bachelor's, master's, professional. And so this is essentially going in chronological order of how you would earn these degrees. But another way to order things is to order them in terms of decreasing amounts if we think that's the thing that's more important. And so what that would require then is that we swap the position of bachelor's and associate's degree. More people earn bachelor's than associate's. And there's a couple different ways that we could do that. I think the easiest is to just swap them back in this table. And so this, of course, refers to the columns here. And so what we might be able to do is just say, control X, that's cut instead of copy. Control V moves it. You'll see now this is gone because we said we're plotting in this range here. And this number is no longer in that range. There's a blank cell, and so we have a blank here. And then what I want to do is put the bachelor's degree here and the associate's degree back here. And that's one way to handle this. And now they go in order of decreasing 
value. So that's something else we can do. All the other things I think we've seen before in terms of pie charts and the stacked bar chart, we can go in, we can change these to be like larger if we want to be able to read things better. We can make the title stand out if we want by making it even larger. We could make that a bolder color if we want so that it really stands out. We could even make it bold if we want by using Control B or Apple B on a Mac. And just again, play around with this. You have access, if we have this selected still, to the chart design where we can look at the different elements that we can add. We can look at different layouts that might be possible. For instance, if you wanted to directly label each one of these with the numbers of the students, again, we can pick them, make them bigger to read a little bit easier. That could be something that's nice rather than having the axis with the lines that we're trying to do a, perform what's called a table lookup, which is where we assign values based off of the position of the bar. Here, we can just directly label the bar with how many people there are. And if the numbers are really important, that could be something that is useful for us. We don't really need this legend, so I would delete that instead, because I think the title of the post tells us what the bars are doing. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to make appropriate titles later on. This title's not great, could be better, but again, the focus here is just simply on how do I get this plot out so I can see it. Of course, when I did this quick layout, it rescaled the bars, so if I really wanted them to be as they were, I'd have to go back and adjust this width so that it's something more like what I like. And that's it. Same as before, I can click on this. I can say, save as picture. This would be my bar chart. I'm gonna save it to the desktop as always. Once it's on there, I can go ahead and open it up and resize it so that you can see it. And there's our final bar chart. It looks all right. It could be improved. There's some things I don't like, like this line that's the border on the outside. I don't like how the border on the bars is cut off. I don't really like this line that goes vertically. I think it should match the line that's on these bars. But again, that's something that we should talk about in a different video. And hopefully now you at least think you have the skills you need in order to make a bar chart. And then from there, you can explore the design elements and how to control them. So with that, I think we're done and I hope you have fun making bar charts. Once we've practiced doing it in Excel, we'll learn the next program, Views, and see the added flexibility that that program provides in order to make excellent design choices for these types of plots. But until then, have fun making bar charts.